Hello guys, it's Kim Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. <laughs> yeah, boy. Finally, we have a new driver and we have a new driver to review and I actually have a fly flying around me, which is kind of annoying. And today I'm here to review the 25.8.1 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 25 is the year 2025, 8 is the month August and 1 is the revision in that same month. So the first revision of August. And by the way, you're hearing... Yeah, it's the chickens. And well, AMD did take their time and I made this video with a, for the 25.7.1 drivers, sorry, I'm even stuttering, drivers that actually didn't happen. They released like three driver versions in June. So the 25.6.1, 25.6.2 and 25.6.3, but then they didn't release a driver for July and that didn't happen for years. But now we have another one in August, the 25.8.1, and it brings some really interesting things. But as usual, let's start with the release notes. And by the way, have you ever been on a trip and needed enough power but didn't actually have it? Well, you should really lay an eye on this power bank. The Chuktek 20 features a sleek and compact design, 25,000 milliamps of battery that will let you charge your laptop entirely or your smartphone up to four times, and a display that will show you the amount of power used in real time. With two USB Type-C and one USB Type-A ports, you are able to charge several devices at once, meaning that you can share it if needed, but there's more. You can get up to 140 watts in a single USB Type-C, meaning that you can run your laptop like it was running on a normal power grid. And it also supports low current charging for equipment like earphones or smart watches. And don't worry about the charging time as the Chuktek 20 supports a 100 watts input, meaning that you can have a 40% boost in 19 minutes or the full battery in about 2 hours. Get your Chuktek 20 power bank with the link in the description and be always powered on. But as usual, let's start with the release notes. Firstly, we start with the new product support for the AMD Radeon RX 9060. You are hearing it right, 9060 non-XT. So we have the 9060 XT 8 GB and the 16 GB versions. And now we have the 9060 non-XT, which is most likely to compete with the RTX 5050. The difference in between this card is basically like the difference that we had in between the, the 6600 XT and the 6600 non-XT. So it's 28 computer units on the non-XT version versus 32 computer units on the XT version. It works exactly the same in terms of computer units. So 28 versus 32. So I believe that you can expect something like, uh, I would say like 20, 20% less performance than the 9060 XT 8 gigabytes, which is okay if the price is also quite lower. As for the highlights, we have new game support for Mafia the Old Country, which will be released in like two or three days, Mecha Break, Wu Chang Fallen Feathers, which is a game that I've been playing and now it works with FSR4 as well, Valorant for Unreal Engine 5 release, and Battlefield 6 open beta. This means that if you are going to play the open beta of Battlefield 6, you most likely want to have these drivers in order to have the best performance available right now. Just, just telling you. As for the new game support for AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4, FSR 4, we have some more finally with Cyberpunk 2077, the so long awaited drivers for Cyberpunk 2077 in order to make you have the official FSR 4. So we do have it. Wu Chang Fallen Feathers now works with FSR 4 as well. Still a bit worse than the LSS 4 Transformer, I tested it on that game as well, but much, much better than FSR 3. Again, FSR 4 support for Mafia the Old Country, Arena Breakout Infinite. It, Game of Thrones, King's Road, Wreckfest 2 and Lies of P. And Lies of P recently got a, a DLC and it is a very good one, a big update with the DLC as well. And, and yeah, we now have FSR 4 and it works very well. I, since that game is very well optimized, I usually run FSR 4 native and it's very, very good to see. Just great quality and the performance drop isn't that big compared to the normal TAA. So yeah. So on top of the 74 games that we already have, we have seven more games. And by the way, there are still some games that are on the, um, on the preview driver for FSR 4 only, like Silent Hill 2, and I don't really know why AMD doesn't bring the, those games to the official drivers. Something wrong, I don't really know, but they aren't still here, and they should be. By now, they should be, definitely. And now we have only new game support, and they're missing a thing. It is supposed to be new game support for uh, HyperRx, if I'm not mistaken. And we have HyperRx profiles for the altars and F125. 
Then we have the expanded Vulcan extension support with several things like Bfloat 16, generated commands. And I believe that some of these extensions are related to maybe FSR in Vulcan since we are looking at Bfloat 16 and so on. Depth Camp, Clamp 01, I don't really know, but they might be related. And one of the things that I've been talking about recently is why is there no FSR Vulcan support yet? I mean, we have FSR 4 for months. Uh, there are games that came out recently, like, like for example, Doom the Dark Ages that uses Vulcan. There are many indie games that use Vulcan and they want to put FSR 4 in their, in their games, but FSR 4 just doesn't have any official support for Vulcan, and that's actually a bummer. I would really like to see FSR 4 in Vulcan, but it seems that AMD are definitely taking their time. Now we have AMD Rock'em on WSL for AMD Radeon RX 7700 XT, with the following has been added to a WSL2, forward attention to FA2 decode kernel enablement, new models with Dipsy R1 and Quen or Queen 2.57b. And by the way, it is great to have the 7700 working with Rockham as well, since it is, or since it has only 12 gigabytes of VRAM, it is great. But what about the thing that we are waiting? The new Rockham version that will actually bring more things like PyTorch for Windows natively, that was announced with FSR Redstone. We are actually waiting for that, especially people working on, pro on, the, pro on the productivity side, I'm again stuttering, on the productivity side, we are waiting for PyTorch support and many other AI features on Windows, like natively. Not needing the Linux subsystem support or the Linux subsystem, whatever, don't really care. I don't want a Linux subsystem. I want things working natively with Rockham on Windows, and I believe that most people want that too. Just go there, plug and play, and it's done. Now we also have fixed issues and improvements, and there are very, very important fixed issues and improvements that lots of people were waiting for. Firstly, we have stutter and lower than expected performance, maybe observed while playing 4K resolution YouTube videos in Chrome, something that was fixed or at least improved, Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing Monster Hunter Wilds with Raiden anti-lag and instant replay enabled. Intermittent application crash may be observed while playing Battlefield 2042 or 2042. And this is one of those bugs that people have been complaining a lot, saying, well, but I've been, ha I've been having these bugs, Battlefield is crashing and so on. So guys, leave a comment in the comment section letting me know if they are actually, or if the game is actually working properly now or not really. Intermittent application crash may be observed while playing Dragon Age The Veilguard on Raiden RX 9000 series graphics products, not that anyone plays the game anyway. Stutter improved while playing Call of Duty Warzone Season 3 Verdansk map on some AMD graphics products. And we also have a note, Stutter has been reduced with 25.8.1 and AMD is working with the developer toward a full solution. So AMD is acknowledging that it might not actually be working as intended in most case scenarios, but at least they improved the stutters and they are working on a full solution. So leave your comment in the comment section if you play Call of Duty Warzone and the Verdansk map. I don't really play it. Uh, I don't really play Call of Duty at all. So leave a comment in the comment section telling us, the community, if it is vastly improved, if it just improved a little in terms of stuttering, if it is almost fixed or not, just leave your comment in the comment section. And the last fixed issue or improvement is texture issues may be observed while using Oculus Rift S on the Raiden RX 5000, sorry, and 6000 series graphics products. And that's it for today's fixed issues and improvements. But as usual, there's no such thing as magic and there are always being AMD, Nvidia, Intel, whatever, being Asus, ASRock, whatever, there are always known issues. The first known issue is corruption may appear while playing Mafia the Old Country on the RX 6600 series graphics products, so uh, the game isn't even out, but AMD knows, and they have been testing the game, of course, and they know that there are some issues, but especially on the 6600 series. Intermittent application crash may be observed while playing The Last of Us Part 2 on the Raiden RX 7900 series graphics products, again, a crashing that was happening on these cards and it seems that it is still happening, sadly. Then we have intermittent application crash may be observed while playing Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on the Raiden RX 9000 series product. So on top of having the stutters partially fixed or mostly fixed, we still have issues that might lead to your Call of Duty Black Ops 6 game just shutting down randomly, which is 
yeah, not great. Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing Wuchang Fallen Feathers with FSR4 enabled on the Radeon RX 9000 series graphics products. Now, those actually went away when I clean installed the driver for the second time. So I did DDU as I always do for all drivers and I was having like crashes, one crash after another with Wuchang Fallen Feathers while using FSR4. FSR3 was fine, but FSR4 was crashing. As soon as I went and DDU again, so I clean installed the drivers again and the stutters, uh, the stutters, not the stutters, but um, the crashing just stopped immediately. I played hours and hours with FSR4 enabled and there was no crashing whatsoever. So if you guys are having issues like these, maybe just consider clean installing the drivers again because that might work. Intermittent application crash may be observed while playing uh, FBC Firebreak on some AMD Ryzen processors such as the Ryzen AI 300 series and the Ryzen 7000 series, also a bummer. And the last known issue is intermittent application crash may be observed while playing NBA 2K26 in my career mode on the Radeon RX 9070 series graphics products. And yeah, while we have lots of fixed issues and improvements, we also have lots of known issues. And again, it is always better to have lots of known issues, known issues than having no known issues at all. Because when the, the issues are known, it means that AMD acknowledges those issues and are working on fixing them. When in most cases, the, the issues are not known at all because nobody reports those issues. And what happens really is that, uh, yeah, the issues will be there for months and months and months and will never be fixed. While issues like Call of Duty, the Call of Duty ones might take months because they did, they are quite slow on that regard, but at least they are working on it and they are slowly fixing it, which is better than nothing. Now, as always, as my experience, as for my experience with these drivers, I have the goods and the bads, of course. And what I saw is that the goods, we have more FSR4 games, now going over 80 games supported, which is actually nice. We have Battlefield 2042 fixed, the stutters, or in this case, the crashes, I believe. Then we have Call of Duty stutters in at least improved. Again, leave your comment in the comment section telling us, the community, if, of course, they are improved or completely fixed for you. Then we have more FPS in Wu Chang with a 9070XT, so the FPS were improved, most likely due to a smart access memory profile or something and some optimizations. And then we have more Rockham in this case with a 7700XT. And by the way, there is another fixed issue that was done with these drivers, the 25.8.1 of course, which is the Unreal Engine 4 stutters that we had when enabling ray tracing. Basically, you go into an Unreal Engine 4 game like Hellblade Senua Sacrifice, as soon as you enable ray tracing or you enabled ray tracing on the RX 9000 series, you have huge shader loading stutters, something that was fixed with, with these drivers. I tested Hellblade Senua Sacrifice Now and The Ascent, both games that had those issues and the performance was much, much better. Just with the usual UE4 stutters now, but not with those huge stutters that we have. The bad points are actually well, the same FPS in Wu Chang with the 7800 XT, which is not a bad point, but since this game supports, or these, these drivers bring support for this game, I was expecting the 7800 XT to also have a performance increase. But it seems that AMD has been quite slow adding some smart access memory profiles for older cards. The same happened in Kingdom Come Deliverance, where I tested the 7800 XT with the 25.3 or 25.4.1 drivers, and what happened is that the performance was much much lower and after some a couple of months I would say I retested the 7800 XT in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 and the performance had vastly improved especially at 1080p and 1440p and I believe that it was because of the smart access memory profile something that they take more time to do for the older cards I assume. Then we have uh, the need to use DDU drivers twice in order to not have those crashes with FSR4 which is a bad thing and the other bad thing is that we don't really have enough Rockham Windows updates. I would like to see something from FSR Redstone and especially from Rockham now with these drivers in order to have the PyTorch and some other things supported, but it, well, it seems that we need to wait and the 25.8.1 drivers aren't it. Yeah. And well guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Hope you enjoyed it and again, Leave your comment in the comment section letting us know uh, what you want uh, with, for the next drivers, what is your experience with these drivers, um, if the, the Call of Duty problems were fixed, if 
any other problems that are mentioned in the fixed or improved problems were fixed, just let us know in the comment section for us as a community to grow together. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.